I want to talk about the patron model. It is a new model that has emerged in the last few years, but really it's old. It's, it existed before and that's where we got it. <laughs> in the old days, artists had patrons, people with means who would support them while they created their works of art. It's not something I've studied in books or anything. And so I suppose there are probably patrons that existed in the old days for things other than art. But what I do know is that it exists today. Within the world of content creation, we've taken on the Patreon or patron model. And I believe that it is a superior economic model. For sure, it is better for the soul and I want to explain why I think it is better for the soul. And I'm actually talking about the soul of the individual who's creating the content, if they're looking at it correctly. But I wonder, too, if it is better for society as a whole. We'll see if I have time to get to society in my five-minute goal for this recording. But let's start with, uh, with the artist, with the creator, with the worker. Under the old model, I would create a piece of content. And it doesn't have to be content, obviously. It could be just I could create something in the world. And I do so with my eye fixed upon future gains. Even if, supposing I'm a musician, even if I loved my music, I would still have to work within the confine of the need for future profit. And here comes in the producer. So the producer would give me some grace he would cover the costs of producing the single or the album. But of course, he would do so with his eye upon future gains and future rewards from the sale of that music. Now, this does a couple of things to the mind of both, I guess, both the producer and the artist. I'm going to focus on the artist. It first of all implies that the artist doesn't have enough. And so it engenders a scarcity mindset. It also allows artists to participate in the game who create art for the sake of some intent other than to make music. <laughs> they may do it for fame or money or prestige. I guess fame and prestige are the same thing. Or sex. So this means that the market becomes flooded with phonies those who do not speak from the soul, but who speak from the desire for lustful pleasure and gain. And for those who do have something to say, for those whose soul cries out, desiring to share a picture of what God has placed within their soul. Number one, it presents a peril. They must try to sell their work without losing their souls to the fame or the money, and that's tricky. But I don't think I'm going to try to address that part of it in this recording. Instead, I want to focus on what they're looking at and how that affects them. So if I have to look to future profits, then it implies that I don't have enough. And so first of all, it seems to be based in scarcity. And I'm not really focused upon other people. I'm focused upon my own needs. And even worse, I'm focused upon my future needs. It projects my mind into the future and makes me a little bit discontent for today. I may have food and clothing and shelter and all the things that I need today. And surely, surely that would have come from some other source than my art. But now I must think about my food, my clothing, my shelter upon some future day. It also means that I'm focused upon me and I desire to get something from the world. The focus turns me away from the desire that I may have to give to the world. And so I end up becoming a slave to future prophets, making all sorts of sacrifices for the sake of my own supposed success. So that now I define success as future gains. And this is part of why it's always disenchanting because success is not something that I have. Success is something that exists in the future, which I can never 
arrive at. I'm constantly chasing. All right, let's compare that to the patron model. Within the patron model, first of all, I must create some piece of content or create something in the world. It may be carrots if I grow carrots. And then I give that thing away for free. And somebody loves my carrots, my music, my content. And then I express to them my need for things. I say, can you help me? Because I too need to eat or I need to have the necessities of life. And this humbles me. So there's an element of humility because in essence what I'm doing is begging. And this seems to put me in a proper framework with existence, a proper, a proper mindset. Because the truth is, is that we are all in need. There's the old saying that no man is an island. But it also has other effects. So now let's suppose that someone says, yes, I'll, I'll help you. Well, now if I look at it correctly, I can turn my mind and my heart towards creating more content, not out of the hope of future gains, but out of gratitude to those who have appreciated my work and chosen to allow me to have the necessities of life and to be able to live. And this can become a motivating factor. A person can look at their patron and go, wow, Susie who sent me $50 or $100 or $1,000 or 50 cents seems to really love this type of music or this type of work that I do. I'm going to create something just for Susie. Now, the truth is there are many Susies out in the world, and so you're creating it for more than just Susie. But it directs you back to the individual if you will allow it. Mr. Rogers used to do this when he did his television program. He would look into the camera and imagine a single solitary child. And by doing so, he was able to reach millions of children. And this type of thinking does something really good for the soul. We begin to live in relation to other people. We begin to love, we begin to live to love and serve other people, not for the sake of some future profit that we can gain from them, but simply because we desire to give them the thing that they appreciate and love and because we are grateful that today my needs have been met, our needs have been met because of their generosity. And so this model, the patron model, the Patreon's the company, but the patron model has the capacity to revolutionize the world, to turn our hearts from the seeking of personal profit to gratitude, humility, patience, contentment, and love.